Right, so I thought we'd do something interesting today. So I've got a bunch of magic cards here. So not just this pile, I've got a bunch of different piles. I've split them into my different colors. Essentially the folders they came from, they're just from my modern collection. Nothing too great, but there is uncommons, uh, rares and mythics, right? That's magic here that we're going to essentially, well, sell off. And the reason for that is it's how I've been paying for flesh and blood. So if we take a look at this order right here, you can't really see the full website. I have everything zoomed in so they fit nicely with one another, obviously the card camera here. <laughs> but if we scroll down here, you can see store credit has paid for my, my flesh and blood endeavors. Oh, I should probably, you guys won't see this, <laughs> but I'll black it out. Uh, yeah, so I've just been slowly selling off bits and pieces from my collection. Usually more high-end cards, to be honest. This is the first time I've just made a giant pile. I've just taken out, uh, if I, can I, relatively, yeah. I've just taken out all the, the $1 cards plus from my collection. And we're just going to try and go through and sell them off. Now, so one big thing, obviously I am using a buy list. I'm not, I don't have the time essentially to piece every card bit by bit and sell it, you know, through like TCG player or, or just personally through eBay. So I'm using a buy list, uh, store credit. It's a decent cash rate. It's usually greater than the card kingdom equivalent. I think in, in a baseline because of conversion, good games overprices or rather offers more value for cards than they, than they technically should <laughs> in AUD, which is good, which is good. So yeah, I'm just going to slowly go through these cards, add it all up. And then the big plan for this, I'm going to use it to buy, not outsiders, I've already bought outsiders. I got a hefty amount, I think. Well, I think five cases in total, which I guess isn't too hefty of amount. I mean, it's, it's 20 boxes and it's one in 40 for the fable. So I'm playing the odds. Hopefully we get lucky. But I, what I want to do with these is I want to sell it off and buy I think one of every set going back as far as I can. So for instance, if we get, uh, call it $150, I think that's about how much they're going for in AUD. I will get Outsiders. If we get $300, I'll get Outsiders and Dynasty. And then we keep going, uprising. And I want to see if we can get more value out of the flesh and blood boxes than whatever we sell this, this stack cards. Veil of Summer, a core 20 set, uncommon card. The buy list price is six dollars so that would be like four dollars yeah about four dollars in us for an uncommon non-foil card yeah that is the power of not having the ridiculous amount of card variety we do in modern magic in like recent modern magic so to speak because obviously core 20 is modern and it's it's creates a really really different feeling in owning cards to be frank, like the fact that I own this, this regular uncommon feels significantly better than the majority of these ridiculous variety of cards that we see nowadays. But imagine if there was not this variety, how good this card would be because it's a good card. It's just got so many printings that it's, there is no value. And simply because the printings see a similar pull rate too. It's, uh, it's just awful from my perspective why it makes me completely happy to just sell this off. I, I kept, I held on to my collection for so long, modern and, well, I'll still keep the old cards. I should mention that. I'm still keeping any older cards I have, uh, but everything else I'm more than happy to go and essentially trade it in for, for Flesh and Blood. I don't know, I might get some other card games as well. That's the other great thing. The fact that I can, I can take what I'd normally spend on Magic and split it between uh, different different games that also feels good this is what is this this is normal and it's just so hard to sell as well just figuring out what everything is well that's green down and what is that uh, it's still slightly more buy although the majority of these are sleeved i didn't expect them not to want a lot of the cards to be honest oh well keep them for next time so green done 113, no, it's not quite. We should be in store credits because we are buying boxes. Cool, so we've, we've gotten one box of outsiders because I think 145 is more accurate. All right, 
One down. Where's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight piles to go. Black was disappointing. Uh, there was less cards overall than how many I pulled out for green, but more more mythics, especially profane transfusion. I remember that being a decently priced card, but they don't they don't want any, so it's not highly sought after. Uh, was it two twelve? So an extra seventy bucks. Halfway to a, another box. Well, red was even worse. Uh, there's only a handful of cards that they actually wanted from the pile I'd pulled out. But you know what? I do have. I actually will move these aside. Okay, yeah. Do have this giant box of. Well, you can't quite see it all. Well, sort of. Bits of loose packs uh, from drafting and whatnot. And there's some Enistrud, Dungeon Master, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh. Is there anything worth pulling from there? No. Oh, you know what I see? Well, one is Mon Horizon. But I will grab out the Throne of Eldrain. And I know, we'll see if we can pull anything fancy. I'm really struggling. There we go. We'll open a few packs. See if we can find anything worth adding to the mix. Move this aside. Oh. Ah, I've got way too many. The Mon Horizon are probably worth opening. So we've got. Cut these aside for now. We've got four Eldraine. Yeah. Let's see if we can find anything decent. Especially like a <laughs> Great Henge before it's reprinted in Lord of the Rings. So I don't know any tricks or not. Uh, it looks like the rare is Sorcerer's Spyglass. Spinning Wheel. Oh, a bit lower. Spinning Wheel might be worth something. We'll take a look at that. Other than that, I don't think... Actually, Mystic Sanctuary. That's, a, that's actually a really good comment. Well, I say really good, it's only obviously a couple. Opts, Golden Cauldron, so nothing in that pack. Uh, a bit lower. Looking at, I should be looking at the screen, not the cards, since I can see the cards on the screen. So, Mouse, Planes, and then... Ah! Wow. That's something. Uh, he's not... He's either banned, or at least he's not as played as when Throne first came out. Order of the Midnight, Wondermere... Ponic Sprite, the the fairy tale art storybook art. I think it's just alt art. Might be worth something. So we'll take a look at that one too, but I don't think anything else. Nah. Okay, that's that's actually a pretty decent pack. Bounce. This one. Logan, Plains, Castle, Garen Brig. Don't think and same with the the Sir cards, the knight cards. Don't think it's it's worth much. We'll take a look at it just in case, but I think that's no good. Tempting Witch, Weapon Rack, nothing really stands out to me. Even Idyllic Range, no. no. I don't think there's anything here. And then Lucky Last Pack. Well, I say Lucky Last, I'll probably stop opening more. I need to get through that box one way or the other. Okay, Food, Planes, First Foil, Corridor Mirror, not worth it. Yovo, Lord of, of Garenbrug. Eh, I don't think... A, a tournament ground might be. But, oh, another Mystic Sanctuary. Everything else, not so good. Jousting Dummy, Youthful, on Tracker, Tomb Raider. Some of the fairies can be worth something. I think that's, these are the only cards. Possibly worth something. I think we ended up with two, two Mystic Sanctuaries. We'll do that first. They might not even want them, now that I say it. But I think from what I remember, it is somewhat of a, of a decent common default. Uh, you know what, Mystic's not going to cut it. I need the full word. Sanctuary. Okay. Well, yeah. Not bad. 90 cents are common. So, we got two of them. Dollar eighty Adds to it. Uh, this pile was what I wanted. Tournament ground. Let's see. I think this has a decent effect. That makes it a bit worthwhile. Except if I spelt tournament wrong. T-O... I forgot the N-A. The Torment Ground. No, they don't want it. Oh well. Castle Grinnenberg? Am I saying that right? Castle G, that should be enough. Ah, okay, it is decent. So the non-foil is 371. Hypnonic Sprite, probably no good. Just in case, because it is the alt art. Uh, need more context. Sprite. No, they don't want it. Okay is Oko. 
Still worth anything from what I remember. Thief. His non-foil is a solid 16.90. Ah, he was so... He was quite overpowered. Come on, focus. Still, decent pull. Obviously, I think the four combined doesn't make it worthwhile. <laughs> but still nice to recoup something from just the excess packs I have. Spinning wheel. Anything that generates mana in an artifact is decent, but obviously not. I doubt Sorcerer's Spyglass. I will check it just in case, but I don't want to hold it. I have so many copies of it. Throne of Eldraine, I went pretty crazy on. Trying to open it. Uh, do I bother looking for the normal one? I, I guess I should be thorough, shouldn't I? Sorceress, Spyglass. Du, 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 du. Secret layer, no. Yeah, I don't want it. Oh well, so that wasn't too bad. We got. <laughs> what was it? Dollar eighty. Call it $22 from the four packs, and I think they're like six fifty dollars usually uh, in AUD. So thirteen twenty six, so almost, almost break even. And that's from obviously a buy list too, so I guess it was decent pulls. Anyway, we'll do blue. Well, I'll do blue, and then we'll come back and see how much the total's grown. All right, that's blue done. A bit better. Uh, was it around another. 30 bucks, maybe? Well, disappointingly, nothing I can do if they don't want the cards. So, reference, that's the white cards they didn't want. And there is some mythics, some decently valued mythics from my understanding, especially like the Angel of Wrath, even though it is the command variant. Uh, I don't know what to say. It, it kind of seems like magic singles aren't doing so well in Oz, because I would, I would argue that good games is probably the most the biggest supplier of singles in Australia. <laughs> anyway, on to artifacts. Soul Ring, surely. Even though it's the command variant, surely they'll want a Soul Ring. Probably one of my favorite techs for a blue mill deck is just chuck this in and then almost every turn your opponent's drawing one extra card really plays into just milling out their deck. Oh well, off it goes. Good old 13 bucks. Artifacts done. Three, almost 375. All right, on to land. If any, this should be the biggest sort of jump. Because I think I've got like Water Grave in here, Hallowed Fountain, nothing super, but still. Usually land every, sells, land sells. That's the easiest way to put it. There we go. That's a nice jump all the way to almost 500. I should also probably read it, all right? <laughs> when I said like Water Grave, I mean Ravnica Allegiance. And is it Return to Ravnica? Something like that. Ah. And I also gotta say, handling magic cards after handling like flesh and blood or even the one piece cards, it really kind of see it like seems that magic cards are really terrible card stock. <laughs> like they're they're not they're pretty thin and they're they're almost grainy in the texture. Anyway, uh specialty cards, so to speak. So I've got like all the time spiral remastered. Uh, time shifted cards, I think they're called. And then what else do we have? As uh, some Strixhaven Mystical Archives. The Mystical Archives, such such a waste. Had they just not have been, you know, as overprinted, they could have been really good. And the foil etching. The foil etching was horrible. Just the fact that, I don't know if you can sort of see. We got the rot there. Yeah, there we go. Like, come on. There is, it'd be maybe 2% of the card is foil etched. Ridiculous. God, it's so funny how unwanted the foil etched Commander Legend cards are. Just because they're so numerous. I mean, some of them should be worth a bit, especially the, the Mythics. But just, you can't get rid of them because there's just so many out there. Right, so the multicolored cards get us close to 700 with a nice Nicole Bolas on the top. You know, we'll open some... Some core 19 to table. Look at that. 650. 650, a, a draft, or really just a booster pack, and no deliberation or thought necessary to figure out which pack I need to get. Just good old one type of booster pack. Can we get anything decent to round off? You know, it'd be great to get $15 worth of something just to round it off. Let's see. Uh, there's the back again. They just feel so so tacky, so grainy. 
And look at that nice, nice black dark. Okay, so everything's at the back. Manolith, is Manolith worth, worth anything? Put that aside, it might be. Double cast, Shield Mare, uh, Brawl Bash Ogre, one with the machine, I'm pretty sure that's decent. And then Highland Lake, one down. What's in this one? Eh, doesn't really matter, it's a bit rough with Okay, where's the uncommon? There, so Dragon Egg, nope. Mountain of Renewal. Actually, I don't quite know about this one. The beginning of your upkeep, you gain one life, sacrifice a draw card. You know, that, that could be decent. Also, I just I chucked all the commons on that side. Let me show on that side. Where were we? Uh, reassembly Skeleton, nope. Death Baron, I'm pretty sure is. And Submerged Boneyard. I don't think we'll get 15 bucks out of this, but it might be close. Always at the back. There we go. Thud. Nope. Militia. Bugler? Bugler? Mirror image. Mirror image, maybe. Oh, okay. That's decent. <laughs> Crucible of Worlds. So, uh, I think I have won in one of the decks I want to keep. I'm tempted to take that copy out, because I'm pretty sure it's a more expensive one than the, the M19. And sell that and keep the M19. I think that's probably the smarter thing to do. We'll check it out. We'll see how much it's worth. Okay. Last pack. Ajani's Welcome. Regal Bloodboard. Departed Deckhand. Sci Master. Don't make me attempt it. We'll look at that one too. But I don't think any of these are decent enough. No. Alright, we'll leave the Crystal World to last. So, starting off. Where's my hand got to be? I remember it's a bit cut off in the actual recording. So, Sci Master. Call 19. Promo. Nope. Non foil. Dollar 40. Decent. Death Baron. I should really just set it to Call 19. Make it easier on myself. Another dollar. Getting there. 12 to go. Was this worth anything? Fountain. And no, I've got the end. Kind of renewal. No, unfortunately, it's not. One with the machine. Nope, as well, unfortunately. And Manolith. Not really sucks about the Crystal World. <laughs> How many reprints has it gone so far? It was in. It was in at least two sets, wasn't it? As extended and. Etched and blah blah blah. I, I, you know, we can take it off core and look. That's pretty decent. Good old 20 bucks gets us over the 700 mark. Virtual sets. I should probably write in a bit more. Crucible of Worlds. So, core 19, fifth dawn. No, old, old, old. Where's the new? So, double masters it was in. And there were ch -ch -ch, one, two, three, four, five varieties. I thought it was in another set as well. I guess not. Uh, okay, I'm going to look through my deck and see what version is in there. Right, so my Crystal World is the Double Masters Fold Etch, which is worth a pretty penny more. <laughs> and if you're interested, my the deck that I'm running is a Rat Colony deck. And it runs uh, Lake of the Dead, as well as like Strip Mine. You know, a bunch, a bunch of land you'd like to recycle, essentially. Okay, so we'll get rid of the... The Double Masters, wow. Well, uh, is it Double Double Masters? <laughs> I don't know how to call it. They call it 2022. We'll take that out. We'll swap it to the 2019 variety just to pump it up a little bit more. And I think I think I should probably maybe downsize my deck. Well, maybe get rid of it. I don't really play Magic anymore anyway. And just keep the, the old cards, take them out. Because there's also like a Yogmoth's Wheel in there. Okay, so Crystal of Worlds rounds us out to 7 26. I did it right. Yeah. I do have a few other bits and pieces to look at. Also, where did I... Oh, the palms all the way over here. Not yet. You can see. We'll put back there for you guys. Uh, I do have a few other sort of boxes to rummage through. And I'll just double check that there's nothing else I want to add. Uh, there is seven Modern Horizon. Will this one be the lucky one? Should probably just crack all the 
Tear Tap Horizon. If I can even, there's no Tear Tap right now, it's just a bit of grit. Right. The front. <laughs> yes, it is at the front. Well, that will definitely do it. I don't need to have to even bother with everything else. No, there's nothing else. All right. So, force of negation. Obviously, not as as money as it used to be, <laughs> but it will definitely get us over over the eight hundred mark. So it is Modern Horizon. Nice twenty-seven dollars. So there was both a Crucible of Worlds and a Force of Negation just in my random booster box. I guess that would have been fun in draft, but oh well. Wait, we're ending on eight twenty-two. Pretty decent. Uh, now I just have the fun job of de-sleeving everything. It's all in these pocket sleeves, penny sleeves are they called? The shorter ones. Ah, uh, smaller ones, not shorter. And obviously shipping it off. And then next time around we can go ahead and. Do a little bit of shopping. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Yeah.